Hey guys, so my birthday just passed and my wife got me a Raspberry Pi B3 Plus uh, with the, is it called the Mega Pi case from Retroflag? Um, I've always kind of been interested in the Raspberry Pi, obviously, but um, never had a reason to like bite the bullet and actually buy it until I saw the <laughs> case the retro pie mega pie case um, is one of the best built cases for the for the raspberry pie and it looks like a mega drive so ever since i saw this case that came out like i don't know five or six months ago maybe um it kind of made me want a raspberry pie again so i got one for my birthday and that kind of worked out uh so basically this is my first time using a raspberry pie um so obviously i'm really just following the instructions putting it into this case um, the case has its own little circuit board as you can see which has two of the front usb ports on it um, it also has the power the reset button uh, power led and um, a soft like a safe power and reset um, and there's a switch to enable that or disable that so if it's disabled the power switch literally just cuts the power to it the same as like unplugging it when you don't have it in a case you basically just use the power cord to turn it on or off but with that little switch turned on when you turn the power switch off it actually just tells the raspberry pi to basically shut down safely it's like a software shutdown so this case offers that and it's again probably one of the best built cases um, for the raspberry pi Obviously, it's a little bit bigger than most cases with that extra circuit board in there. Um, it also has a, a header on that circuit board for an optional fan. So there's a spot in the bottom where you can s install an optional fan. Um, I didn't get the fan to start with, but I think I'm going to add it um, after using this thing for a little while. It does get pretty hot, and this one's not even overclocked, just stock. It gets pretty hot, so I think the fan is, is probably necessary or at least recommended. Um, I also bought a 128 gigabyte micro SD card, as you can see. Uh, I went with a SanDisk, which was a few bucks more, but it's really the one that everyone recommends that uses a Raspberry Pi. Um, so here I am taking the 128 gigabyte uh, micro SD card and putting it into an external card reader um, so that I can. Uh, copy an image file to it. So basically I've downloaded uh, 128 gigabyte uh, image file and this is like a pre-built um, image that's got everything on it that you need for a Raspberry Pi. So um, basically this image is um, based on Raspbian which is um, a version of Linux for the Raspberry Pi. And then as you can see that in itself has something called emulation station on it. Um, which is basically this front end. It gives you all the pretty menus, all the graphics and, and everything for the games. Um, under the under the shell, this is actually just running RetroArch. So you've got like Emulation Station on top of RetroArch on top of uh, Raspbian, you know, Linux basically. Um, so that's, that's how this thing works. <laughs> um, again, like I said, this image was 128 gigabytes. Um, it has 3,600 games <laughs> preloaded in it. And whoever made this put a lot of work into it. Um, almost every game has uh, custom borders, as you can see here with Sonic the Hedgehog. Um, all the games have like their cover art. And most of the games, if not all of the games, <laughs> have like a little video file that will play. Um, if you leave it on that game for a second, it'll show you the cover art, and then it will start playing a little video file for that uh, for that game. So, uh, again, a lot of work has gone into this this build. Um, if you're looking for the build, just look up 128 GB uh, all killer no filler. That was the key. It's all killer no filler is what this particular um, person calls their their image or their build. Um, so here's the Super Nintendo. As you can see, there's there's literally hundreds and hundreds of games um, for each system in here. <laughs> um, so the Super Nintendo, I mean, every game you can think of is probably on this build. 
And uh, just to show you a Super Mario World, a game everyone's familiar with, uh, basically runs as you would expect. <laughs> um, so far from what I can tell, everything runs fine except for uh, N64. It's kind of where this thing teeters out. Um, it can be hit or miss depending on the game and depending on if your Raspberry Pi is overclocked or not. If you overclock it, I think it'll run most of the N64 games fine. Um, but this goes up to Dreamcast on this image, uh, which from what I understand is kind of pointless. This is, uh, even if you overclock this Raspberry Pi 3, it's not going to run most most Dreamcast games uh, very well at all. So, But yeah, um, PlayStation seems to run pretty well from what I've seen so far. I've played a few PlayStation games on it and they seem to run well, so I'll show you show you a PlayStation game. I think there's 110 PlayStation games on this build. So there's less PlayStation games obviously than like the Genesis and the end, uh, Super Nintendo. Um, but uh, you know, obviously these games are larger as well. So um, here's Crash Bandicoot as you can see. And it runs, as far as I can tell, exactly the same as a real PlayStation or obviously with emulation as close as it can get. Uh, TurboGrafx-16, of course. Um, forget how many games there are on here, but again, you can see all the games have the cover art and the little videos that play. Um, so that's pretty neat. Uh, in here is all the settings. There's a lot of advanced settings that you can mess with, including overclocking, as you can see there. And anyways, that's it. Um, this thing is really cool. That's all I can say. Um, basically, I think under $100, you could build this with everything that you see here. Everything you need is basically the Raspberry Pi itself, a power supply, which most of the ones you buy are going to come with the power supply. Just make sure yours does, or if it doesn't, that you have one. Basically, it needs to be at least 2.5 amp. This stuff, micro USB, 5 volt, 2.5 amp. Um, the case, obviously, don't even really need the case. It just looks cool, but there's a lot of cases for Raspberry Pis. There's a lot of super cheap cases if you don't want to spend 35 bucks on this one. And a micro SD card. And, uh, yeah, that's it. Like I said, this one here, I think under 100 bucks, even with this case. Uh, so, yeah, see you later.